world. But no man hearing my voice knows whether I truly live or whether I am a thing of the imagination, a thing of dreams. You will hear my story in a moment on 2,000 plus. Adventures in the World of Tomorrow. Dramatic stories of science fiction from the years beyond 2000 A.D. Today, the story of a horrible nightmare that wouldn't stop even when the dreamer woke up. A story called The Green Thing. It is the year 2000 plus 175. It is late evening, and all is peaceful and quiet in Dr. Harvey Clunden's sanitarium. Outside, on the vast estate that stretches away from the main building, there are only the soft country noises, the wind sighing in the trees, the shrill chirpings of innumerable crickets. In the well-furnished rooms, the patients sleep, stretched out on comfortable mattresses, clean white sheets, the country breezes straying over their forms. In room 32B, Mr. Summers sleeps peacefully with his head on a fluffy pillow. He sleeps and he dreams. Help me! Help me! Please! So, in the light of the growing psychological problems facing our nation, the government has sent me to you, Dr. Glendon, to enlist your aid. Since you're the country's outstanding psychiatrist... Well, I'm honored indeed, Mr. Carley. But I don't know that there's much I can tell you about the advancement of psychiatric research that isn't being published in the medical journals. Well, Dr. Glendon, isn't there anything that you're working on now, something definite... I know you're a cautious scholar, but... Uh... Look, Mr. Carling, it isn't possible to announce sweeping new generalizations in our kind of science. Our work is painstaking, complex, highly subjective. You take the case of one of the patients here in the sanitarium. Oh, Betty, will you bring our records of Mr. Summers? Oh, yes, Dr. Glennon, just one moment. Summers is about 40, 41. He was admitted five months ago, suffering from a melancholia. Here are the records, Doctor. Oh, thanks, Betty. Now, as you can see from these notations, he's been feeling much better the past few weeks. Mm -hmm. Yes, I see. Until last night, when he suddenly woke up screaming in his bed. He was being attacked, he shouted, by some sort of green devil. We had the hardest job getting him under control. Now, in the past, Summers had spoken quite often of a green hat that he lost as a child. His father, he remembered, had punished him severely for losing it. In later oh, life... Glendon... He... This is all very interesting, but you can hardly call this dream analysis anything new. Yes, it has been known for centuries. Well, then I don't understand... Mr. Carling, I know why you came to see me. Apparently, I haven't been able to keep my achievement as secret as I had hoped. That's right, sir. We've heard rumors. All right, Mr. Carling. I've said that Mr. Summers' dream is very unusual. Now, would you like to see it? You mean, see his dream... Exactly. I am going to show you a motion picture of Mr. Summers' dream. Photographed from the subconscious mind, exactly as he dreamed it. I attach special nerve electrodes, and these electrodes pick up the current impulses of the brain. Then these impulses are transmuted back into pictures on the film of the machine. Really very similar to the method of wireless photography. Here's Mr. Summers' dream reel, Doctor. Oh, fine. Thanks, Betty. The projector tube is ready, so I just place the dream reel in it. And 
There. Hold on to your hat, Mr. Carling. You're going to see an actual dream. Yes, yes, very well, Mr. Clobber. Three slices of lemon drops will do. He thinks I don't see him putting the pennies in his pocket when he knows they belong to me. Uh, three slices of lemon drops it is, little boy. I'm not a little boy, Clobber, and you know it. I'm all grown up, and I don't come to your store anymore. I don't even live here anymore, and you steal pennies. All right, all right. Get out now, little boy. Take your lemon drops and get out. Get out. Music. I didn't know Clover had music in his store. I don't like his music. I'll slam his door. I'll go out in the street. Now there won't be any more penny-stealing music. Oh, what's that? It won't go away. It won't go away. Summers, I am calling you. What's that? Clover? It's... It's green. It's a monster with great pink eyes on long stalks. It's standing in front of me. It has claws. You're not the little boy anymore, Summers. Oh, no, no, don't touch me with your claws. Come with me now, Summers. You are mine. You belong to me. No, no, no. You're touching me. Don't. Don't. Don't help me. Help me, please. Betty got to him at that moment, and the dream machine shut off. Phew, some dream. Uh, what effect will the discovery of this dream machine have on psychiatric research, Dr. Glendon? Well, I've only just perfected it about four or five months ago. We've got perhaps 40 or 50 photographed dreams in our files. 40 or 50? Yeah. However, as far as developing new techniques and treatments, it may be years before I can get them analyzed and correlated so that overall theories can be drawn from them. As long as that. Now you understand, Mr. Carling, why it's a little difficult for me to answer your questions. That dream was fascinating. I've never seen anything like it. A doctor, I know I'm presuming on your time, but I'd like to see just one more. I'll have to report on these at the government bureau. Well, only one more, though. I'm sorry, but I'm quite busy. Uh, what about this one here? The purple tag. What's that for? I haven't seen that one myself yet. Purple tag means it's from the violent ward. Mr. Roth. Hmm. Sick man. Well, we'll try it. All set. Three white mice. How'd you do, Mrs. Kemp? <laughs> For I'm climbing a wall and there's only two of us. It's not a one. Me. Me. I'm all alone. <laughs> Don't take that balloon. <laughs> Doesn't make much sense of that. Gibberish, I'm afraid. Rolf's a difficult case. Homicidal tendencies. Comes from a good family. Was a very successful businessman. Hmm. Can you do anything for him? Oh, I think so. There are times when he can be reached, lucid moments. And some of his dreams provide clues. Here, see? Now, 74. That'll show him. You're not frightening me. I don't believe you. You can't scare me. But oh, no. Don't touch me. Your claws, your green claws. Oh, your green claws. Doctor, look. On the screen. Look, there it is again. That green thing. No. It can't be. It's impossible. Two people can't possibly have the same dream. I don't understand it, Betty. I can't understand it. I've been through all the records of both of them, Summers and Rolf. There's nothing in that background that would cause them to have the same dream. Are you sure they haven't been together at some time? I'm positive, Doctor. They haven't even met. Mr. Rolf came here only a month ago, and he was placed in the violent ward immediately. He's never been out of it. It's possible for people to have similar dreams, yes, but never to dream of the same unusual, horrible, specific subject as that, that green thing. Every detail was the same. The pink eyes, the claws. Makes me shudder myself. Betty, I want our dream reels. All those I haven't seen. Oh, now, you're not going to view them all. It would take you... I don't care how long it takes. I want to see them all. I've got a funny feeling inside. And I won't be at ease until I know. Until I'm sure. 
Sure of what, Dr. Glenn? Sure that none of the other patients have had that dream. That same horrible dream of that green thing. Dream nine, Mrs. Jordan. Shall I put the sound on? Oh, no, not necessary. We can see it if it appears. No, nothing here. Dream ten, Miss Farnham. No, nothing. I don't think we'll find anything, Doctor. It must have been a freak, a coincidence. Uh, keep going, keep going. Dream 11, Mr. Craig. Dream 21. Nothing there, either. Dream 22. Huh. Maybe you're right, Betty. I'm beginning to think myself... Dr. That... Glendon! Dr. Glendon, look! There it is! The green thing! Bradley. Ah! Turn off the sound. Turn it off. That's it again. The green thing. Four of them, Carly. Four dreams of that monstrous green thing. Each one from a different patient. And each one during the past week. Carly, there's something there. Something to make even a psychiatrist feel frightened. <laughs> Darling, the patients weren't having a dream. They couldn't be. They had nothing in common but the fact that they're in this sanitarium. Why, even the nature of their illnesses are different. Doctor, aren't you getting a little mixed up yourself? Huh? You saw those dreams. I saw them. Betty saw them. I know it's incredible, Listen, but... to have a dream means that you create that dream. You and nobody else. You mean you think the patients didn't create those dreams? They're not their dreams? There is such a thing as thought projection. Mental telepathy? Yeah. Why should anyone want Someone to... Someone may have found out about the dream machine. Maybe jealousy or a grudge or a hatred of psychiatry in general. There are many reasons. Well, what we've got to do is to find out where it's coming from. The patients must be protected. How? First, we've got to find out whether this telepathy is coming from inside or outside the sanitarium. Then we've got to track it down. I tell you, Carly, whoever's trying this terror by mental telepathy isn't going to get away with it. I'm not going to stand by while a lifetime's work is destroyed by a campaign of terror against my patients. I'm going to institute protective measures at once. Anything yet, Doctor? Oh, I still have the garter screen beamed on the area directly around the main building. I didn't expect to find anything so close, but I want to search every inch of the grounds. You still feel whoever it is is on the grounds? Can't be sure of anything, except that I'm convinced that the staff is loyal, and I have a hunch that whoever is transmitting these thought waves will want to be close enough to judge the results. Shall I bring the patients down now, Dr. Glendon? Oh, yes, Betty. Go get them, will you please? It's just possible that they may be able to help us. They may have felt currents emanating from a certain direction. Mm. Mm. I think the garter screen has reached its range limit, Doctor. It's repeating itself. Mm. All right, I'll give it wider focus. I'm going into the grounds now. Wait, there's something. A figure on the screen. Yeah, I see him. Mm. He's carrying a club, a stick or something. Who is it, Doctor? Can you tell? I don't want to alarm him. I'll signal the patrol corps. But me. It's that red button on the wall, isn't it? Oh, no, no calling. Never mind. That is one of the patrol corps. I can see his armband. Too bad. Well, I'll switch the machine to the north fringe. There's another figure. Is that? Mm. It isn't. <laughs> we seem to be well guarded. Another member of the patrol corps. Well, let's hope the patients will be able to... Here's help. Betty. Doctor. Doctor. She's alone. Oh, Betty, where are the patients? They're gone, Doctor. What? They've disappeared. And a fifth patient has just begun screaming in his room, the green thing, the green thing. Sixty-four, all accounted for, Doctor. The four that are missing would make sixty-eight. 
That's how many patients we have. I checked the nurses, eight besides Betty. And they're all here. And the patrol corps have checked the rest of the staff. And no one has left the grounds except the four patients. Unless somebody got in and carried them off. No, no. No jet mobiles and no jet ships have been in the vicinity between the time the patients were last reported and now. The patrol corps will vouch for that. There's the village. Linfield? Oh, it's the only village for 100 miles. But it's a backwoods country village, a quaint place. Never kept up with the times. No, I doubt that they have any jet mobiles in Linfield, much less jet ships. But you can't arrange for transportation there, can't you? The inn. Why, that's where they go. Why didn't I think of that before? It's the center of the village, the gossip spot. If the patients entered town at all, news of them would spread to the inn. Betty, you take charge here. Carling and I are going to Linfield. How long will you be gone, Doctor? Until we find them. All of them, they're no longer alive. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help you, non-doctor. I ain't seen no strangers, spoke to no strangers, or you're heard of no strangers. Well, how about transportation, jet mobiles, or jet ships? Ain't put in any calls for jet mobile service nigh on to two months. Not since Miss Jennings busted her leg, and we had to send her to the hospital in the city. Oh. <laughs> jet ships? Why, last time one of them flaming monsters landed here... We nearly had a ride in Linfield. Damn fools all thought was an invasion from Mars. Just around a wild goose chase, Doctor. Yeah, so it seems. Well, thanks anyhow, Mr. Barker. You've been very helpful. <laughs> Horts, he says. The blasted idiot believes in horns. I do, I do. I do. Everyone knows there's ghosts everywhere. Idiot! There's no such thing as ghosts. There are ghosts. There are ghosts in every village and town. I will tell Quiet down, you boys. You'll be getting my end of bad reputation now. Hey, 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 there's the doctor. Dr. Glendon talking to Mr. Barker. I put it up to him now. What'd you say, Doc? There's no such thing as haunts, ghosts, either now. Hey, you, you tell my ignorant friend. I wasn't listening very carefully. But if it's ghosts you're talking about... Well, there's never been any scientific evidence that they exist. Haunts don't exist. That's what you're trying to say, ain't it, Doc? Now, that's right. Well, come on, Carling. Let's get out of here. Hey, hey, no ghosts. This, this Doc's an educated man. He knows. <laughs> yeah. Then suppose you tell me what that green thing was floating around down near the caves. And we ain't the only one who's seen it. Right, boys? Hey, A green thing? Where? What are these caves? Right down the river. Why, Doc? You ain't going there. It's nighttime now. Darling, will you risk it? I've got my right gun. And... Doc, you're crazy. I'm telling you, there's a haunt. Why, there ain't a man in this whole village go with you tonight. Well, if it's only a ghost, you needn't worry. But if we're not out of those caves by dawn, you better come for us. It won't be a ghost that's holding us. <laughs> This must be the right cave, Carling. It's the only one with a brush trampled down in front of it. Here he is a tomb in here. Shh, quiet, quiet. I don't hear anything. We well, just don't want to be taken by surprise. Have to be as quiet as possible. All right, come on. Hey, what's that? Carling, where are you? Are you all right? Oh, it's coming for me. That green thing, the green thing, it's gone. It's terrible. No, 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 there's nothing there. You're on the floor of the cave, but there's no one near you. Nothing. He's asleep. He's having the dream. That same dream. Having the green thing. Come on, Carly. Come on, snap out of it, Carly. It's only a dream. Dream. Only a dream. Coming. I feel dizzy, tired. What's the matter with me? I'm falling asleep. No, I won't. I won't hurt myself. Dr. Glendon. Dr. Glendon, I am calling you. You must come with me. No, no, I won't. I'll fight you. I'll fight you. Come with me, Dr. Glendon. I control you now. No, 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 it's, it's just a dream. I 
know it's a dream. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to wake up. Oh, I did it. I'm awake. I conquered the green thing. Did you? Did you conquer me, Dr. Glendon? Huh? I can't be. Standing over me. The pink eyes, the long stalks, the claws. The green thing. <laughs> Right in here, Dr. Glendon. Into this rough chamber. And you, Mr. Carling, don't worry. You won't fall. My will is controlling you. My patience. Over there in the corner. Rolf, Bradley, Summers, gone. Now, what have you done to them? Summers, are you all right? Bradley. Bradley, this is Dr. Glendon, your, your doctor. What's the matter with them? Gardner, Bradley. Nothing is the matter with them. They just don't understand you anymore. They are attuned only to Venusian thought wave. Venusians? You're from the planet... Venus? That is right. For a long time, we have been observing your Earth, your resources, and your remarkable technology. But we did not know how to conquer you, for we of Venus have no strength or physical dexterity, only mental power. You shouldn't have told me that. I'm going to beat that horrible body of yours to a pulpy green mess. <laughs> you hit only air, didn't you? <clears throat> I'm growing tired of this game. Stop. I will that your arms obey me and not you. I, I can't move them. Calling, help me. Do not be <laughs> foolish again, and I will return their motion. You hypnotized my patients the same way, didn't you? By those dreams. A little more complicated than what you earthlings call hypnosis. But it is mind control. I have come to Earth to prove to my planet that this is the way to conquer your Earth. We will control the minds of its inhabitants and thereby control their strength, their physical dexterity. I began on your patients first because their minds are more easily controlled. What do you want of them? Their bodies. They can perform physical acts that I cannot. With their bodies, we Venusians can continue our investigation of your planet at close range. And we can also study the structure of the Earthling when I bring them back with me. Bring them back? To Venus? Do not worry, my dear doctor. I shall not separate them from you. I will also take you and your companion with me to Venus as rare prizes. Earthling, bind these two men. No, no don't do it, man. I'm your friend, your doctor. No, let me go. Let me go. Oh, you shot him. You shot the monster. Forgot about me. Maybe he didn't know the Earthlings had weapons, too, like ray guns. Well, why doesn't he fall? He's still standing. Did you really think you could hurt me with that? Your death rays have no effect on my body. Drop your weapon. Find them, men. I'll shoot them. I'll kill you, slave. You cannot. 
But if you could, I would not care. There are millions more to choose from. You can kill yourselves, too. You are replaceable, except to yourselves. You are trapped. Your only escape is death. Calls. The crumbling. The explosion of your ray gun calling. You've loosened the rocks. It's a cave in. We'll be buried alive. The corridor. Quick. To the corridor. Grab the patience before the green thing controls us again. Make them follow us. It's our only chance. <laughs> the mouth of the cave. Hurry, doctor. It's blocked. The rocks have fallen here, too. There's one big one just at the mouth. If we can move that one, I think we can make it. All right, help me, doctor. I'll get the patients, too. All right, come on, then. Here. Pull. Pull. That's right. Now we can squeeze through now. You go first, doctor. Pull the patients after you. All right. All right, I'm out. Uh, Rolf, come on. That's it. All right, Bradley, you next. Come on. That's the way. All right, you, Summers. All right, hurry, hurry, doctor. Quick, now, come on. All right, Gardner, quick. You, all right. That's it's all right there. All right, now you, Garland. I can make it. Help. Good. Help me. Earthlings. I cannot escape. Can. You can't squeeze through. He has no physical strength. Earthlings! Earthlings! Come to me! Patience. They're going to him. He still has power over them. Come on, Carly, quick. Before they release him, help me shove this rock over the opening. Come on, quick. That's it. There we go. Thank goodness. Hey, what's that? Look out, step back! Collapsed. The entire cave fell in. We were just in time. Yes, Carling. In time to save Earth from the horror of her green things. Next week, an incredible story about a man of science who dared tamper with the secret of human life. Be sure to listen to That Which Lived in a Head of Steel. 2000 Plus is produced by Dreyer and Winolson Productions Incorporated. In today's cast, Lon Clark played Blendon, Joseph Julian was Carling, Esther Sondergaard was Miss Connors, Gilbert Mack was Rolf, John Griggs was Summers, and Henry Norell was the Green Thing. The script was written by Edgar Marvin. The music was composed by Elliot Jacoby. The orchestra conducted by Emerson Buckley. Sound, Walt Shaver and Adrian Penner. Engineer, Bob Albrecht. This is Ken Marvin.